Nero's ship was also very cool, despite the fact that it was ridiculously massive. It looked like like Cthulhu coming through that hole, man. I was like, God, this <laughs> flying spaghetti is, monster. Right? It, looked like the, it looked like the the spaceship embodiment of a tribal tattoo. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> it really did, man. Welcome to the show, folks. This week we're talking about the 2009, I don't know if it's going to be a classic. It might be. It's a great movie. It's Star Trek. Hey. It's a reboot. Yeah. The, oh, the reboot with um, Chris Pine and Leonard Nimoy and other Leonard Nimoy and uh, what's his face and the other guy. So uh, let's get right into it. J.J. Abrams. Yeah. I, I, I think your lack of enthusiasm for Bruce Greenwood in the intro here is unacceptable. Sorry. Let me do it again. No, I actually just, you need to die, sir. Oh, I need to die. Yeah, right. Okay, so if I was really, if, if. You, sir, are dead. I want to die. I want to die. If I truly loved Bruce Greenwood, as I do, because of the uh, picture that we had many signed shirtless photo. <laughs> the shirtless had. photo that we from, had. From many moons ago. Anyway, so we're talking about the 2009 Star Trek starring... Bruce Greenwood, or as I call him now, Bruce Wood, and our favorite, Carl Urban. Let's get into this wonderful film. High level. Who would like to go first? I, I want to defer generally to your to both of your trekkiosities. Yeah. Like I, uh, as covered in in a few conversations around Trek, like yeah. I've I've always been a fan of Trek, and I watched all of the like TNG shit and most of Deep Space Nine back in the day, but like I have no I don't have the pedigree that you guys have with Trek. So Fair so I, I think like I, I come at this as like a um, you know casual probably the target it. audience, you know? Mm -hmm. Like like this is kind of like not a Trek movie, but it is a Trek movie. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this when it came out. I still really enjoy it. I think it like I think it's a really good example of a movie that is a home run in 2009 before all of the MCU shenanigans. And, you know, it, this exact movie, you know, today maybe would just be received differently because of just the oversaturation of other stuff we've talked about a million times. But, like, it's a fun, fast-paced kind of romp. And generally, Trek isn't super fast-paced, so it's, like, it's, it's quite tonally different, mm. but... I had, a, I had a great time, and I very much enjoyed watching it back in the day. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it was picked just because it's a fun movie, I guess, and it's still pretty fun. Hey, how about that, folks? Over to Jar Higo. What do you think, Ben? Fun. Yes, that is the operative word. It is fun. Um, I, I think uh, you know you, you mentioned not knowing how much of a Trek movie this is, and I, I might be inclined to agree. It's a little on the Actiony, you know, cliffhanger kind of side for mm. not, not cliffhanger as in a, a cliffhanger ending, but just lots of like really tense kind of action sequences, <laughs> actual and, hanging off cliffs. Yeah, you know, uh, hanging off the bottom of a drill, uh, you know, space drill platform or whatever, you know, kind of stuff. Um, but it's cool, you know, it's fun, it's a very entertaining watch. I think the strength of the movie is they did a really terrific job casting it. Um, mm. and the actors for the most part did a really great job of channeling the actors in the original series you know mm. um, I, I felt like Chris Pine wasn't you know he wasn't doing like nobody was doing like an impersonation but there's something about the spirit of the way they delivered their thing that felt right you know like Chris Pine felt like Shatner's Kirk and Kinto, yeah. Zach Kinto felt like Leonard Nimoy's Spock, even though Leonard Nimoy was in the movie, which is weird. Anyways, um, mm. and especially, of course, you know, the McCoy, bro. Carl Urban delivering the most ridiculously <laughs> terrific McCoy ever. Totally. Uh, did you just say the incumbent Carl Urban? <laughs> I did not say incumbent. Okay. Um, <laughs> Did I say incomparable? Uh, uh, or maybe I that, meant to say that, Yeah, that's probably what incumbent. it was. That's probably know. what it was. Um, <laughs> if I said incumbent, I apologize. I, I no. I um, think you did. I like it. Anyways, uh, 
yeah, I'll leave it there. Uh, I think I think that's like the the best thing about these movies is they did a really good job casting it, and the cast did great. One hundred percent. There admittedly is not like much of a story here. I mean, this is like a a full on like action movie, and that's fine. I don't. It doesn't really need to be. They were trying to like do Star Trek in a different way, and I don't know. They definitely succeeded. It's fun. It's fast. It's like different than any other trek in that in that way and i think it def- definitely needed that you know or it may not have needed it but it it, it didn't hurt anybody to do it like that so no i appreciate it, it yeah it definitely works and um the fight the spa the, 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 the only reason i mentioned the story is because trek is always known for its like excellent excellent storytelling man you know even in the films but um this did so this didn't really have that but it had a lot of great other things you know like the Actors, Carl Urban in particular, kind of channeling DeForest Kelly, I think. He was sort of the strongest one. I felt more like Quinto was kind of doing an inter- interpretation, you know. But then I did feel like, you know, Pine was kind of doing a Shatnery sort of Kirk at times. Thank God not trying to sound like him. So, um, I don't know. The movie's excellent, man. Action's great. Eric Bana is the villain. I mean, come on. We even get Tyler Perry. I mean, that, that enough is reason alone to watch the movie. <laughs> Admiral Tyler no, Perry. Of the, yeah. You know, so, uh, okay. yeah. I didn't, I didn't pick him up. Yeah, he was one of the admirals at his initial hearing. Yeah, yeah. Right before the hearing gets canceled, then he goes and saves the world and comes back and like, yeah, we'll give you a medal. It's like, you rascal, <laughs> you here's rasc- a medal. You scamp. You saved us all. Here's a medal and you get your own ship. Yeah. You know, and I felt, I felt like one thing I kind of, I know it didn't, really happened like this but i kind of just felt like I, it was such a roller coaster ride of well just everything was a roller coaster ride you know and i feel like every time we turn around uh chris pine was like yep, yeah i'm there you go i'm captain again he he can't he can't do it you know <laughs> like every, like first it was like pike's leaving okay you're you're captain now and then it was like you know spock's come okay well i guess i'm captain again you know all right now we're gonna fire you and throw you off the ship and then he comes back and yeah well, i'm captain again it's just <laughs> meant to be dude you know like i don't know it's kind of funny like that super funny <laughs> i'm not the captain in fact i don't even have a rank but yes <laughs> well you're a first officer now okay great i mean pike dared me exactly so what's uh where should we go first i think like the first stop might be a, a quick jaunt to an 11 where like you you shared the um pitch meeting video and like Mm. it's funny and it skewers the shit out of the movie and like the movie has like i don't know like you said there's not much of a story and it's like it's kind of a nothing burger in so many ways but because it's fun like i don't give a shit i know and i think my 11s is like i i'm totally willing to like accept how ridiculous a lot of this movie is but i just don't really care i don't care either i don't know it's like popcorn it's like beekeeper you know like the one moment in the pitch meeting thing where they're like, so wait a minute, they're going to like drill into the middle of the planet to make a black hole. Couldn't the black hole just be on the server? It's like, no, we need more time for them to action. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, you know? Right, like, right, right, and right, I think right, it really right. sums it up. Like, yeah. it's like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. this is fine. Like space jumping and like the red, the red shirt being all hyped about the space jump and then just and eating then shit and like, totally you know, whatever. Like eating shit like a red shirt he <laughs> eats shit for breakfast that guy i'll eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast and like a red shirt does man your first job is to die your second job is to bring me coffee in engineering <laughs> <laughs> he dies so fast <laughs> oh my god man there's two other guys that go i feel like there's two other guys that go away with him and they're like it's like yeah you two are gonna die too you're not coming back home not coming back man sorry so like i i don't think there was a universe where we were gonna I like go into fucking full gripe mode about that because I, I doubt any of us give that much of a shit about I don't know the pedigree of this particular piece but I'm acknowledging that there are holes and I don't fucking care about no them, I don't care I either so let's let's not go there so I, I saw them on full display on this watching and it may perhaps more like painstakingly full display than I've ever yeah than I've ever recognized before but I still just like I kind of leaned into it and had a laugh about it and so yeah being, mm. like yeah job, exactly you know? and i think yeah. i think that's kind of the spirit of the movie like you're you're just in for the ride and yeah it's there's some stupid shit that happens but it's still yeah yeah it's, but it's okay it's kind of the point and i how well was this received by the hardcore you know trek nerds i don't remember i would imagine they were probably pretty forgiving considering they just wanted to see a 
a feature film after the like Nemesis or whatever the ones that were kind of going Dude, to hell. I don't really pay much attention to that. I mean, Nemesis was the only one that was sort of kind of questionable, you know, and mm. um, all the other yeah, ones with the Next Generation cast, I loved, man, and I'm pretty sure Ben did too. Yeah, yeah, you know? I got nothing against them. We did. Which one did we do? Uh, Peanut Insurrection. The British Tar. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. British Tar. Um, I, I remember hearing a lot of shit about Into Darkness, but I don't remember hearing a lot of shit about this. Yeah. Yeah. Me, so, same here. I don't know if that was like general, you know, viewership or Trekkies in general or what, but. Uh, or them being willing to give this one a break. I, I feel like it was. Yeah. Like, I, I received it well when it came out, you know, like I was. Yeah. And as. Like, yeah. The, we're too. the nerds, dude. We're the resident Trek We, nerds. we, we are the are nerds. the nerds, and, Chad. I'm not, I'm not always, uh, <laughs> you know representative of, of the uh the nerd popular, community the nerd community whatever community the grumposity community, community. The nerd community oh, i exactly. well i i i'm not afraid to step up for the nerd community of star trek and you know i received the movie well i thought it was freaking great i was like cool fresh little freshy take on star trek i mean why not i don't really watch a whole lot of like stuff on movies especially since we've been doing this because i just don't want to anything to spoil it for me. I like to go in cold, you know? So I don't know. I, I don't really watch a whole lot of that stuff, but even cursory things, I didn't really, I didn't hear anything to the negative, you know? I think the other two yeah. films, yeah, people griped about them, you know? But. And this is kind of like just before social media blows up. There's still like, yeah. the nerds were fully on the internet at this stage, but it was slightly more like, <laughs> I would imagine forum conversations or some yeah. shit, which is a whole different totally. thing. Totally, this is like pre-Reddit too, you know? I don't know, it man. It doesn't I, seem like it was that long ago, but it totally it, was. It but it totally was. was. <laughs> 2009. The smartphone was like within a couple of years of this movie. Well, that's the thing, fucking it's, it's crazy that this movie is like, it's 15 years old, you know, or whatever. It's like the, uh, yeah. the, the scene where, you know, young Kirk is stealing the uh, the Corvette. Yeah, and the the like the phone in it is like a built in like a Nokia. Nokia you know, <laughs> yeah, be -do -do, be -do -do, be -do -do. I like, love that. Like, ooh, boy, you guys really missed the mark there. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I like it, but at the same time, kind of doesn't just because of the like midlife crisis car. You know, I kind of like the idea of the midlife crisis car having a Nokia in it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I mean, well, just the fact that it was like a, a car-based phone um, that, that didn't, oh, sure, didn't sure, seem sure. to have any kind of like, you know, capabilities of uh, you know, computing or whatever. It was just a phone. Sure. No doubt. I wish Nokia had... A car-based phone that doesn't do shit and meanwhile yeah. the cops on like a flying jet bike <laughs> a car phone that allows you to hang up on your stepfather you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> can we talk about that jet bike for a second man can we talk about that jet bike of course we can talk about that jet bike i love the bike and i love the mask that the bike cop was wearing too it was super like something i wish i had in city of heroes it kind of reminded me of like one of the cops from uh thx 1138 Ooh. oh yeah there you go i mean it wasn't i mean those were like from mannequin faces, I think I remember. Probably. Yeah, but like, yeah, just same kind something of about, something about something about it. Yeah, like, gave me that vibe. It's such an unnecessary scene with yeah. the bike on the cornfields of future Iowa, but like, yeah. I don't know, dude. You know, sabotage comes on, and the Nokia, cool. and the kid doesn't care about the car, and he's like, "Fuck you, dad." No, yeah. fuck you, son. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like drives the thing off a cliff and he's like yeah. sliding in the dirt down with Louise and he's, there's a problem oh, officer I don't know it's so yeah it's, yeah it's so dumb and I love it it man. was it was my name is Jason Biscuit yeah it's kind of like Superman's hometown you know spielberg -y kind of moment there you know the rebel kid bullshit sure it was dumb as hell but also still entertaining it's still cool. Yeah, I still liked exactly. it, man. I don't really care. I still loved it. No, I yeah, I'm you with know? you. But it was dumb as hell. And the bar, the bar fight scene too. Like it's. Well, what about the fact? Wait, wait, hold, hold on. What about the fact that like they're building the Enterprise in like his backyard, dude? It's like behind his local bar, the local watering hole is where he lives. Is where they're building the Enterprise. It's like, really, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, Kev. A couple too, perfect sense. Sure. 
well, we don't know for sure that it's like right behind the bar. But it's, it's oh, come on, dude. Air. You know I'm embellishing. It might yeah. as well be, for <laughs> Christ's sake. It's, just, it's being built. It's at the other side of town. It's being built in there. Like, oh, yeah, the Midwest is a great place to build a starship. Nice and flat. <laughs> like, you know, plenty of... <laughs> Plenty of gravity. Yeah. Whenever she's like, you know, at the bar, she's like, I have three pan Garnanian gargle blasters <laughs> and two Budweiser classics. And, you know, <laughs> I'm murdering the uh, the gargle blaster reference to uh, mm-hmm. Hitchhikers, but whatever. Whatever. It's still good. Pan galactic gargle blasters. Thank you, pan galactic gargle. I'll t- I need to die for that. That was not cool. You are fine. And there's like the dude with the digitally fucking ridiculous face in the middle. Like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, man. Why the lo- okay. Why the long face, dude? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right? Get it? Uh, uh, uh. So wait, what did, what did we call that? What, did, what was that death, Chad? Gargle blaster death? I don't know. Pangalactic Pan- garbled it. <laughs> Pan- Pangalactic ball gargle. <laughs> Oh, dude. There you okay, go. Sure, that's awesome. Dude, yesterday, uh, yesterday I got a um, notification from eBay on my phone. So I don't know why I have eBay on my phone, but it was like, "Hey, your <laughs> your notification setting for Seagram's Golden Wine Coolers." It's like there's a new <laughs> item of Seagram's Golden Wine Coolers. And I was like, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> oh boy. Obviously, like four years ago when I was drunk, I, yeah. I set up a notification and nothing has entered eBay about Seagram's Golden Wine Clothes in the four years and since. And why, why would that uh, – and and it's, I don't understand that, you know? It's like the people like sign up for like notifications and subscriptions <laughs> with like booze like that. It's like, really, dude? No, no, no nobody's doing that. Hey, dude, did you hear the new Seagram's wine coolers came out? Yeah, I just got the notification on my phone, bro. Some folks might have, like, abandoned their, like, dope-ass 80s-style mansion and, you know, like, people, like, were auctioning off shit and found, like, fucking, you know, (laughs) cases and cases of Seagram's golden, like, in a cooler. In the wine cellar. Are we talking like some kind of Sotheby's type situation, Ben, where somebody finds the cases of old wine coolers and then they go I, I for like know. millions of dollars? I don't know if dollars? Sotheby's is the word, but yeah. Sure. <laughs> Same Maybe idea, yeah, right? Maybe selfie. Uh, yeah. uh, I'll be attending yeah. an auction at Sotheby's this weekend. They're giving away several cases of vintage Seagram's wine coolers. <laughs> But it's it's like a Sotheby's Applebee's mashup, you know. Ooh, like a, god damn, that's strong. That's Keep going. Definitely, definitely closer to an Applebee's than a Sotheby's for sure. <laughs> than a Sotheby's. <laughs> now, darling, Dude, I, it, darling, you I, know I, that <laughs> Seagram's Golden Wine is still on the menu at at Applebee's. It's got to be. That place is like a time warp. But I, I like I I got like notified in bed about Seagram's Golden Wine cooler, so I like bleary eyed like opened it up and it was like. A twenty U.S. dollar inflatable five foot tall Seagram's golden wine cooler, and I swear to God, I almost bought it and sent it to one of you guys. Damn it, dude. <laughs> it was a very close call. Why didn't you? I don't know. I just didn't. You should have done that. That would have been great. It would have been. You should just do it now. You should just do it right you, now. You should have just kept it for yourself so you can like blow it up and put it on the lawn for Christmas. You know. I I would have gotten it for myself, but they wanted like a hundred and fifty bucks to ship it to Australia, and I couldn't uh, justify it. That's so oh, freaking okay. bogus, dude. They could just do like a flat rate postal box to you guys for like seven bucks, or I could send it to myself for like two hundred bucks. I can't. I I just can't imagine a world where I'm like, hey, check out my new inflatable golden wine cooler. <laughs> and everyone's just like, uh, how much does that cost? Okay. I'm like, oh, it's only three hundred bucks. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, man. Oh, here they are. Oh, the glory of the the latest lineup of Seagram's Escapes. Only at Seagram's.com. And so when you recently purchased a Jamaican Me Happy, I presume it's four-pack because they probably can't come in six-packs. They probably have to be four-packs, right? It would be too manly if they came in a six pack. And <laughs> That's somehow, what I mean. You know, like it has to be. It has to be kind of lame at the same time. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It was a four yeah. pack. Yeah, I was like, so, so, perfect. I love it. Well, I was like, I was cruising around a grocery store that was a new grocery store. Right, I had never been in there, and like <laughs> one of those new grocery <laughs> yeah, stores. These new fangled if you know what grocery I mean. store. There, <laughs> it's you know? kind of a big deal. You know. Huh. Well, what do you mean Shit, when you go to a new store? Grocery stores around. Well, I, I agree with you, but this was, I mean, especially here, for right? Ben and I with our 
particular pedigree in grocery grocery lore. But I, I Groceryosity. It, yeah, it was it was not that kind of grocery store, Ben. It was it was a new store for me. So it was a in a town that I don't normally grocery shop in, which is the town next to ours, and it was a shop right, which I in have not town. been in really ever. I've never really been into a shop right. So like I'm cruising around the store and I'm like, bro, it's ten minutes till they sh- cut cut the liquor off. I was like, what am I gonna do here? I can't like I had the I had <laughs> my kid, bought it. I had my, yeah, I did. I had my kids with me. So I go to the cooler section. I'm Love like, dude, it. there's nothing here that I can drink. And then I was like, and then there it was, man. And it was like, ah. <laughs> and, uh, and like the dude in Constantine, you just started smashing them and sticking them over your head. Totally, like, man. Bah. My kids were like, dad, what are you doing? I was like, bro, I'm nothing, bro. <laughs> you know, As you know? he stabbed a cross into totally, your Totally, like, st- I took one of their toys and I was like stabbing the cross into my <laughs> hand, you know. I was thinking the shape of an S, you know, yeah. which stands for C. Uh-huh. and Satan at the same time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. so, so yep, yep, yep. yeah, yeah, it was a good time. So whatever. Yeah, it was kind of a panic buy. I was like, I really felt like having a drink that I night. love it. So I was like, I'm I love that you panic bar right? Jamaican me happy. I know. But before the first thing I had to do before I even got it up into the car was take a picture and send it to the two of you because that I mean, somehow good. is more good. important. Yeah. I don't I don't think we mentioned on the show, but there's a worthwhile little mini cul-de-sac here too. When we saw each other in person, Higgs brought us Ooh. alcoholic Sunny D, which should be it should be officially in the show as a a moment in the history of this podcast. Absolutely. Yeah, you especially the, being that you the alcoholic Sunny D shotgun one that like had, I did. I did. I shotgunned the, the Sunny D in my in my <laughs> uncle's backyard, my former Boston judge uncle's backyard. I walk. I don't know if I told you guys this, but like, I went. I I was hanging out with you guys, and I went to my uncle's place, and like all the boss, they're like the most hardcore Boston towny, like Boston accent people on earth, and like. They were like, oh, look at this kid. Look at this scumbag. And I was like, scumbag, you say? And I pulled the I pulled the Sunny D out and I put it on the table. And the whole fucking crowd was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like the most perfect thing. Did that shut everybody up? And then I shotgunned it. I made them film me. And I still can't watch it. I still haven't seen the footage that I sent you. It, well, my phone won't let me watch my own shotgun. It's what? Like, I can't. Yeah, I can't see you. Get, like, I literally can't watch it. I haven't seen it. Let's see if I can download it and send it back to you or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it on. It needed to be shotgun. I mean, like, if it anything did. needs to be shotgun, it's a can of alcoholic study D. I agree. And I kind of like it. I kind of like that it's like a unintentional disappearing video. Right. So we'll just put, put a thumbnail of that and be like, yeah, you, you, it's a thumbnail, but we couldn't click it either. So, who, who took the yeah. who took the video, Chad? My brother-in-law. On your phone? He probably phone? has Still it on his phone. No, no, it was on his. He had an Android phone that he did it with. So. Oh, have him get it. Get it. Don't lose it. Get it. Get it, get it. So shout out, shout out to the the awesome Sunny D and other gifts, the uh, triple stuffed Oreos, which I, I had to eat all of them at the same time while getting on an airplane. And it was, yeah, it was <laughs> sounds great. It was amazing. It was basically, it was like a security thing. We're like, you need to eat these now. And I was like, oh, yes, I will. And you're going to yes, watch I me. Will. You're going to watch me. Let's go in the back room. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so, yeah, you're making me happy. We, we, you were recording a death, and that's somehow, oh, the Seagram's thing. That's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, wow. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Should we talk about the movie or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why bother? I was, I was going to actually start with, like, I, I'm glad we started talking about, like, the holes and stuff like that. But I, I wanted to kind of just start at the beginning of the movie and just talk about how, like, impactful and exciting and dynamic that opening scene is, man. Like, I, I remember... Yeah. When I first saw it, like yep. it, it really blew me away, man. When you know it was like, it was just like the the you know the front of the ship is just like right in the screen, man. And I was like, whoa, okay. And you know, it just it had that quality to it, and the way they lit everything. And you know, <laughs> I watched a video where they talked about the lens flares <laughs> and there yeah, are where a they shitload lens of lens everything. flares. Everything. But like it was cool, and like that's not the type of thing you'd normally see in like a Trek movie, man. So it was just very, very dynamic, dude. And the guy that played um, Captain Robau is um, mm. 
Yeah, he was in a bunch of stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, Le- Elysium and like all these other these other things that he's done. Man, he's a really, really great, great actor. Man, super commanding presence, dude. So he was a great like person to open on, like him and Chris Hemsworth. You know, before Crims he- Crims Hemsworth, Crims was, Hems- the Crimson Crims- Hemsworth, the Crimson Crims- Hemsworth, <laughs> the Crimson <laughs> Hemsworth. That's what he calls his penis. That's that, right. That is what he calls his penis. That's right. <laughs> that is, dude, the funny thing about that, Ben, is that that is the kind of thing that, like, his version of Thor would totally do because he's so dumb, totally. you know? Oh, um, he would totally do that. But, yeah, Crims was, like, you know, before Crims was Crims and Thor, like, he was this guy, and I was like, who's this dude, man? But he was... He blew me away in this he one He did, that time, dude. He blew me away, too. This. He blew yeah. me away when I watched it the other night. I just... His performance is so good. He's in the movie for five minutes, dude, and it's, like, it's excellent, great. man. And I... Mm. Just the whole, like, you know... It's great. Him and, sc- him and uh, we have Kirsten Dunst at home. <laughs> and yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally, dude. Oh my god. You know, it was weird. I didn't know this until I, I watched the credits. Like, I actually have this on Blu-ray, and that's how I watched it. Then it said Kirsten Dunst at home in the credits. It did. Yeah. It said Kirsten Dunst at home, Kirk, because that you know she was married to George. Kirk. Jennifer Morrison, and, and she was great. But she, I, the whole every time I saw her, I was she like, was great. Is that Kirsten Dunst? Like, I know. Me too. Yeah, I, I did. I did the same thing. And but her name is her character's name is actually Winona, which I thought was weird because Winona Ryder's in this movie, and I hadn't seen yeah, Winona Ryder in movie is. for ever, man. At this time, yeah, no, it was no, great to see no, her. No, Two thousand nine. No. Not again until Stranger Things, right? Uh, That's as it. Far as, yeah, for me, yeah, I hadn't seen her, yeah, until Stranger Things. But um, anyway, the opening is just really, really excellent. It kind of sucks you right in. It's super dynamic. We get right into the action, man. We get to meet Nero right away and you know Eric Bana is not I wouldn't say like your sort of usual choice to play a villain but he's an excellent choice to play a villain because he's a very very like capable actor kind of can do it all so it was really great to see him in this sort of psychotic role I thought it was cool Mm. Mm -hmm. you know yeah Christopher great great way to open it you know and like just having the whole thing, just all the now the noise and the sound of like everybody dying, or well, not everybody dying, but uh, Crim <laughs> Crimsworth dying, <laughs> Crimsworth dying, and then it just kind of fades to, you know, nothing, and then we're right into that that earworm of a uh, theme music, which was great. which was really yeah. excellent, man. I really, I really like the music a lot, man. I thought it was excellent. As much of an earworm as it actually is, it's good. <laughs> yeah, looking, looking what? back on what? it, uh, Jen, hold on, it's, what? It's, <laughs> gosh, your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of the Crimson Helmsworth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. You don't have to be. You don't have to. That be. is it. That is all. Okay, I know you say that. But, Signing you know, off. It's feeling like one of those shows already. Hey, whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Chad. You may, I didn't you really, may like, well. looking look, looking back on it, this is the most fucking J.J. Abrams so. thing that ever J.J. Abrams <laughs> totally. like. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, the fact that he went on to just, you know, I at this stage, I give so little fucks that, like, I'm just kind of like, I don't care. But, like, he went on to just and absolutely fucking annihilate Star Wars with everyone else involved with Star Wars mm. that, like, I don't know. There's just something about like I'm 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 on board, kind of pun intended, with the like lens flare y Dutch angles. Like there wasn't a straight fucking shot in the opening few minutes. It was like every goddamn shot was mm-hmm. at like a forty degree fucking angle. And, and like you'd always like the just, ship like, was compl- always rotating too. Yeah, you know? it's, it's like, always <laughs> something really weird. Yeah. yeah. You know, here's, exactly. Here's and the, like here's the ship right there. Which is which is fun on a large screen, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and like, uh, you know, the 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 trek that I knew from TV mainly and from some of the movies, like you know, Whale Trek, like Whale Trek, it's much more subdued. It's much more like like a movie, like a drama you know, piece. Really wide shots of a ship with two like fa- you know f- fucking photon torpedoes or whatever the fuck shooting out of them. You, you know what I mean? Giant just like, sunglasses cases. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So it just I don't know the dynamic. 
choices here are the most JJ Abrams thing ever, but it kind of like just it kind of like worked to just reset my my like expectation of mm-hmm. a slower moving action thing or you know more you know like it's more like at the bridge be bleep blooping on buttons mm-hmm. to like shooting shit as opposed to just the sheer <laughs> amount of explosionosity here you know what i mean and the <laughs> and the crimson helmsworth i love that crimson helmsworth thing where they were like and so he stayed in the uh <clears throat> pitch meeting where he's like it's so he he had to stay on the ship because the <laughs> autopilot was broken and he pushed a couple buttons and then he sat there and did nothing <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> kind of like an autopilot <laughs> i don't know very man. funny and very true it hits the right notes dude like yeah. even this time like on viewing 10 or whatever of this like you know, I I got like a lump in the throat with the whole like naming his kid while he's about to die and totally. saying he loves you to his wife. Like it hits the emotional. No, it's good, man. No, what's there is good. Is really good. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it, like the actors are it just so gets you it gets you on board real quick. Gets you on the on the wagon. Hundred percent, man. I think it's excellent in that in that in that regard. And they say they say that the old Crimson Helmsworth donned his helm <laughs> as a result of this. <laughs> Uh, like he got Thor because of this, which I could totally see. I could totally I, see this. Like I can't. He's saying it. He's using that term so matter of factly now. Like he's been using it for five years. It's so great. And every time you say it, I'm thinking about something Chris else. Worth penis. Yeah. As if, I don't. As if, well, see now as I'm if, thinking as about as his it. Penis like has his own like portfolio and you know like agent his and own, shit. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's got its own IMDb yeah. profile. Yeah. The Crimson Helmsworth right. has Crimson Helmsworth. headshots. Uh, the Crimson Helmsworth. <laughs> Pun, intended. <laughs> Pun intended. What I'm thinking about is the is the like I want the like slight AI. Like I want to get a photo of Thor and I want to select the helmet on Thor and have it be like a fleshy penis helm, you know, mm. like a kind of like you know like, superhero esque like glands penis like th- helm. Glands helmet. Yeah, yeah, just like right at the tip, like, just like, the tip, like, just uh, the tip with it, you know, much helper. like a juggernaut or, uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like the Conan, the Conan, uh, the Conan hair helmet in in his awesome costume. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, that was very uh, yeah, penic in its esqueness. Yeah, I, he he hit such a home run here in five minutes. Like I he agree. stole the show, and no. he got Thor as a result. And I'm I'm totally fine with that. Man. I agree, and Good I I kind of could argue that him and um the other actor Ferran Tahir that plays Catherine Robal, like they kind of steal the show. They and did. Like they, he was such a badass too. It, it, they both the were, and like that, I could also argue that that's like the best scene in the whole movie. Like that beginning is so good, sure. man. You know, I mean, there's other parts that are great, no doubt. You know, but. Like that that opening bit is really strong, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, I don't know. Um, Very. And in, 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 in the the scene goes to good use too, where Pike is in the bar and he's like, "Your father was captain for twelve minutes. He mm-hmm. saved eight hundred lives." Like it just like he, yeah. he kind of like hits that you know military hoorah, come and join us note so well that he goes and joins them. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, "What are you gonna do?" Your dad saved 800 people in eight minutes. What are you going to do? Have, dare a, have you another to do beer. better. You're going to have another, Al- another Budweiser Al- classic. Al Gorean uh, nosebleed or whatever. Snarkle fleek. Yeah. <laughs> Al Gorean <laughs> snarkle fleek. Romulan ale. <laughs> I think. I think it was you, Heegs, in the uh, high level talking about just the perfection of casting here. And I think it really like comes together in that bar scene. And. Mm-hmm. It comes together in the first act, but like I loved just the introduction of all the characters, you know, like seeing Ahura in the bar getting hit on and Chris Pine's just like swaggery Indiana Jones esque charisma in this like podunk ass bar. Mm-hmm. And her just being like, I don't give a fuck, man. Fuck yeah. off, you know, fist fighty and Pike. And it's just, there's just so much great chemistry, maybe. Definitely between all of these people so early, and and uh, of note is the the way she entered the scene physically, like the shot that he used. I loved it. Was so cool. It was like it was like we see her back, and then all of a sudden it pans over to like a couple of pictures or whatever. We're seeing her like 
sort of like reflect or reflection, but it's not like a super clear reflection. You know what I mean? So it just, it kind of entices you to want to see more, you know, about, you know, who's this gorgeous woman, like strolling, strolling through the bar like that, you know, yeah, it's got um, that song it, from like the grandma's boy soundtrack playing. Yeah, ex <laughs> totally. <laughs> and it's, it's not, uh, but it sounds like it should be. It does sound like it should be <laughs> for sure. I think, um, so yeah, that was a really, really cool shot to kind of introduce Uhura man, you know, and it was really cool to see her have like, front and center, really cool character. I mean, directors, a lot of directors say that, you know, 50% of the job is the casting. And in this case, it definitely paid off, right? So definitely, um, we've got all these super capable actors. And, and, and what's kind of odd about this movie is that you know, even though we all agree that, it, you know, there's some holes in it and like the story is kind of thin, man. You know, there's not really anything super cerebral like we're used to from Star Trek in this movie. And, and, and that's a bit of a departure. But despite that, there's still great dialogue that these actors can use to bounce off each other, man. And they do it so well, man. I mean, this whole cast is like, they're all kind of in the same age band, you know? And, and like you said, this happened like at a time when it was like, you know, I think the iPhone came out in like 2007, so this is 2009, so it's like it's not like yeah. that all that bullshit has blown up quite yet. And I think that that works to it its advantage, you know, quite honestly. Yeah, that's you know? interesting. And um, you know, it's just like you got Simon Pegg, Chris Pine, Quinto, Carl Urban, you've got um John John Cho, um John Cho, right? John Cho? Mhm. Mm yep. And John um Cho. Yeah, you got uh, Saldana and, you know, it's just like, of course, Bruce Wood and Banna and like all these other people. Like it, it was great. You know, it was really, really But great. I love that it's like 80% of the cast, not 80%, but three quarters of the young cast were getting their break here, you know, which I just love that too. Yeah, Anton Yelkin, man, who, who tragically died like right after the third one, man. Yeah. Uh. Such a bummer, man. He was a favorite of mine, dude. And I mine too, yeah. absolutely loved him in um, Hearts in Atlantis, which is a movie adaptation of a Stephen King. Um, it's one of the short stories in a, in a collection of short stories called Hearts in Atlantis. And the movie wasn't that great, but I, I still really liked it because the actors were really good. But he was so excellent in it, man. You know? and So good. God, so Highlight good in this. Film. One, yeah. of, one of, yeah. Yeah, I just loved him. It was. I cannot believe he died. That when I heard that story, I was just. Like, yeah. You've got to be kidding me. You got crazy. crushed in your own driveway. Like that was horrible. By his car. Yeah. yeah horrible. For those that don't recall. Yeah. Absolutely. Horrible. I mean, it's the kind of thing where like your your car isn't in park and it starts rolling and you just make the dumb decision to be like, I'm gonna get in front of it and I'm stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, my god. I know. Dude. Like any you know any other universe, he just like watches it roll by and is like, fuck, that's annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But in this one, he got crushed to fucking death by. Or I was so, actually so able horrible. to stop it because I've done that myself. I've done that too. Yeah, sure. I've made that mistake. Sure. I've made that mistake and yeah. stepped in front of it, but was able to actually stop it. But it's I don't know, like you know, like John Cho, Harold, and Kumar. Like he had some stuff, but like this is I don't know. He's just so charming in this. You know, they're all just so charming. I guess in this, I'm, I'm I was very charmed by them all. Yeah, they're all very charming. Um. Helmsworth included the Crimson Helm like like Chris Pine I love Chris Pine dude and this is where I fell in love with Chris Pine Same. as just an enjoyable actor he he doesn't really do Kirk in a traditional sense but he kind of does in another weird way like he's got the kind of swagger it's, but like it's what a it different is. approach which I was yeah. cool with but I think that's what it is um, I think it's this yeah. kind of swagger and how he, he he kind of inhabits his own skin is very yeah. sort of Kirk esque, and the 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 yeah. added the general attitude that he has about life and the way he approaches it, you know, I think that was what was in line with Kirk. You know, it wasn't so much obviously that he was doing a vocal impression, you know what I mean, or mannerisms or anything like that. And I'm it glad he did. Yeah, it would have fallen flat. Yeah. I agree. So I right. think he hit the sweet spot. Yeah, he catches the spirit. There is one mm. bit where I was like that's that's it and it's at the very end of the movie after like you know he relieves pike and you know gets mm. all the medals and shit and then they're back on the enterprise and they're getting ready to take off and it was he like he like comes onto the bridge and he looks around and he's like bones <laughs> and the yeah. way he says the way he delivers that is like mm -hmm. pitch perfect shit. totally like 
bones. Lock them up. And I kind of, I kind of, it's it's poetic and probably intentional that he hits pitch perfect in the last scene, and then it, like, it, honestly, dude, like it's as cheesy as it is, like the last shot being outside with this, that like ping sound and then Nimoy giving the intro to Star Trek mm -hmm. is just like, it sends shivers, you know, a little bit for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The re the, the reboot right. that leads directly into it's the, it's the, the Star Wars flick where it goes straight to Vader on the uh, transport, you know, the, what was the fucking Rogue one, one that I like? Rogue One. Rogue One. It's the end of Rogue One where like it goes straight into episode four, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah I love I yeah. just I don't know. Yeah. It sends shivers that that intro at the end. I love that. I agree. No, it was it had a lot of it had a couple of moments like that, man, that were really, really great, you know. Like you said, like at the beginning. I love, yeah. You know, and, and you're dead right about the bones thing, Benny. Like he he nailed it there for sure. Yeah. yeah. And there's little glints of that, like that Shatner, sure. you know, mm -hmm. throughout the movie. Yeah. But that's one specific example I can think of off the top of my head. It's like Pitch perfect, the fucking shot. Like, mm. yeah, but, you know, like the way he says it is perfect. I like. How, I do. It's so uh, good. This is so minor, but I really like how they explain in the course of the scene why he calls him Bones. Because that that I never felt like I never really knew why from the original series, man. Or any, I mean, I kind of grew up on the movies, not the original series, but you know, I never really knew why. So I was glad they took the time to explain that, you know? It was really cool. Yeah. I was kind of well, sipping on a flask, like all I got left is my bones. That's canon in the Kelvin verse or whatever, but I, is don't it? Know if it's, I don't know if it's canon. Yeah. I saw something that was saying that doctors were generally referred to as sawbones and Roddenberry. I've heard that too. That, so. Yeah, I've heard that too. I've heard that. Yeah. It's good though. I love, Even I just mean, an attempt to give it some color is nice. Sure. It's, it, it's worth it for the delivery from... Carl Urban, you know, oh, like fucking Urban, that dude. whole, that whole Love story. That yeah. good. Wife took the whole planet in the divorce. Mm. Well, it got my bones. So good, dude. I, you know, like the thing about that guy. <laughs> he steals the goddamn show. I know he does. He's, he's, so he's so excellent. <laughs> he's so excellent. And, you know, he, like, I was already a huge fan of this guy by the time, I mean, Ben and yeah. I were both huge fans of this guy by, by the time this, uh, this movie rolled around and like, I, I just remember finding out that he was playing Bones. I'm sure Ben was the one that told me, and I was just, like, so stoked for him and for, like, Trekdom. You know what I mean? Like, what what better actor just to be included in this cast, you know, with – with really, he in any role that he would have ended up in, you know, would have been fantastic. It's just kind of – it's kind of like Ragnarok, you know? You're just like, oh, Carl Urban's in it? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even care where he is. You know it's going to be kick-ass, you know? And it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably the most kick-ass. So I was really, really excited to see him in it. In fact, I was really excited when I heard of the casting of, you know, all of the these, like, legendary characters, man, you know? Like – John Cho is Sulu. I was like, oh my God, that's perfect. You know, like Peg yeah. is Montgomery Kinto Scott. Well, I was like, damn, dude. Like, you know, everybody was just perfectly cast. There's no weak link here. No, know? there really wasn't, man. No, no, no. Even the even the green I, the yeah, green chick I, went on to Kinto, beat. is it Kinto or Quinto? It's Quinto uh, he just not Kinto. he is so fucking solid. Like there's there's the other cast members doing a good job in their character, and then there's doing a good job in your character while the original dude is standing in front of you. I know. <laughs> like, that's a slightly different thing. Like the fact that they could share the same frame and he and he carried the essence of Spock in such a I, I found plausible way. Like he's different than a lot of the other Spocks. You, you know, and they, they went with the kind of young and kind of brash stuff, which like whether you give a shit or not, like who mm -hmm. cares? Like I just he just he home run the fuck out of did, it, man. Did Benny? You mentioned at the beginning, like you know that that Quinto kind of did the same thing as as Carl Urban. I don't really feel that he did. I feel like he was doing like kind of his own interpretation of the character, but I didn't really get the vibe that he was kind of, you know, you know, uh, I can't remember how you put it, like using it using Nimoy as kind of inspiration. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just that he looks kind of like young Nimoy. Well, that's and for with, damn with, sure. Mm. With yeah. the ears and the. You know, like not not just like an everyday life, but you put the ears and that haircut on them, and you're like, oh yeah, like yeah, hey, you, know? you look like Nemo. <laughs> and then hey. you put then you put Leonard Nimoy in the same movie as as an older man, you know, and you're like, oh wow, he does kind of look like that, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's there's something there. Like this could be this this guy younger. Yeah, I get what you mean. 
to n- to nitpick it a little bit, like I I did find his inability to control his emotions when he's being bullied as a child, and then when you know Kirk baits him mm-hmm. on the bridge, mm-hmm. like it, that's not really in keeping with my headcanon with Spock, with but like Spock. same with all the other holes. I didn't really give a shit, you know. I was just like, okay, fine. He's brash. He it's more it's more him. I just don't I just don't think that I don't think that Spock has that weakness like but it's not a weakness. I don't think a young Spock would 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 have that problem. I mean, this is a super nerdy discussion but like I I don't think that I mean, I don't know, Woody, like we never really seen like a young Spock, you know, maybe maybe you know, it's not not until later that he kind of gets control of it. But the other part of it is that as they stayed in the movie, like that is very much part of who he is. His parents encouraged that in him yeah. in the movie, man, like as an adult, you know, yeah. and like his dad was like, you know, I'm proud of the fact that you're a half breed, you know, like I love your mom, you know, sure, sure. Yeah. she was just like, go be a human, you know, and, you know, he, and he did. <laughs> I love like, you no matter what, Spocky. Yeah, and I did. And I kind of like that sort of, I mean, it sounds weird to say this, this like humanizing of Spock's human side. Like, I, I think that it was, it's, it's worth applauding that they weren't afraid to like, play with that a little bit and let that do more than it usually did, you know, because Spock was always kind of, he was always a little robot, robotronic man as, as, as a Vulcan, you know? And like, so I don't know if that human side was as apparent before, and maybe this is what that looks like. Yes. No. I Mm -hmm. mean, there are moments in like the original series where, you know, there's that robotronic Spock, but then like sure. those little random moments of levity where like his sense of humor coming, like he'll have deliver a line that's kind of like funny, ah, you know. Totally. Um, and there, you know, definitely times he, you know, he's half he's half human, and, mm. and you know, yeah. I don't know if Spock ever did the uh, what is it, the Kulinar, the like, mm. oh yeah, emotion. It's mentioned in this one ceremony, like. Oh, yeah. Certainly, in uh, in Strange New Worlds, like he hasn't done it yet, so he's mm. still, you know, he's still not struggling, but you know, sure. his, his human side and his emotions are still there, although he doesn't, he still doesn't express them like a, like a regular, like a straight up human would, you know. Sure, but you get those moments where you know, you know, like there's the moment in this where after Vulcan gets destroyed, um, you know, her hops into the elevator with him, and like you know, she's sort of like vicariously expresses the emotion for him but you mm. can tell that it's there you know and of course he yeah just, like, i feel like i hope the crew continues to perform admirably you know mm. yeah <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. He fucks okay, off totally. to go cry in his room or whatever yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. i feel like i feel like my my gripe <laughs> what color are, are vulcan tears i feel like my gripe is like Pink with sparkles. Exactly. <laughs> glitter, pink glittery, pink glitter. <laughs> glittery, glittery tears. I think my gripe is that I feel like it's, it's backwards. So a, d- a different way to state it is like in this movie, there are points where it's like he's trying to suppress the human and be more logical or whatever. Mm. And I feel like the thing I like about Nimoy Spock is that he's – kind of like his humanity like blossoms throughout his development and like his interaction with the crew and Kirk like brings out the human. Mm. And so I don't know, it's a slight difference, but Mm. I definitely think they hit the, it wasn't like a total failure here at all. It's just like, there's something about it. That's kind of like, huh? And then on the flip side, like there are really good moments in this Mm. with, with him, Mm. you know? And so it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know if gripe is the right word. Maybe it's just kind of like, I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm, Sure. Like the other holes, I don't really give that much of a shit. Yeah. When I watched it this time, my gripe, like, uh, you know, when, like, the kids are in, like, Vulcan, I don't know, second grade or whatever. Vulcan. You mean little, in the learning the little, bowls? The little Vulcan the little bowl lear- pods. Learning yeah. bowls? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was more, I felt it was more out of character for the kids, the, the, yeah. the like, the straight up Vulcan sure. kids. To be, to be pricks. To be fucking with them. Totally. Or, to, or you know, even just be trying to, like, get a, elicit a response you know, for science or whatever. However, they tried to explain it away. You know, like they were being little fucking pricks and I total pricks. Didn't. Yeah. That seemed out of character to me more than I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that actually. 
And in that same vein, his dad, you know, the original kind of conversation his dad has with him as a boy where he was like, I was an ambassador and marrying a human was the logical thing Hmm. is replaced later with him saying uh, to the adult Spock that just lost his mother, like I married her because I loved her, you know? So like Hmm. there's a lot of quote unquote humanity in in his father saying that too. So like similar to the kids being kind of weirdly human in their bullying, the dad was weirdly human in his love for his wife. And like, yeah, it's plausible. Like I have no issue with it, but it's interesting that they went that way with many of the Vulcans in the movie, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's just like a choice of the Vulcan being closer to humanity than maybe how it was perceived in other movies of them being like quite different as a species, but it, we're deep in nerd town here. <laughs> well, that's, it's always been canon that Vulcans are like deeply emotional, but they're so emotional that they need to keep it under control. Sure. So, like, yeah, under what under, they're feeling yeah, versus block. what they're expressing on the outside is a very different thing. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it touches on one of the best parts of Star Trek, which is like, it's not few few lasers. It's a it's about like exploring, you know, cultural interactions, and like it's about the goodness of quote unquote humanity and how it can be seen through different cultural lenses and stuff. Like there's a lot of really attractive philosophical stuff in Trek as opposed to like sure. Star Wars or whatever. So sure. hundred percent. It's a, it's a nerd, nerd to sack, but probably worth a little bit of talk. Yeah, mm. Of course. It's always worth some nerdery. No, absolutely. This is what the whole thing is about, man. Um, you know, I've said it before, but I, I will officially state for the record now that, uh, Star Trek is better than Star Wars. Like it's not even an argument anymore. Apples and oranges. They're two. Yeah. They're two very different things. I think execution wise, Star Trek has done better. Well, and I mention it here because this movie is the most Star Warsy Star Trek with Abrams and shit. So that's fair it. enough. I don't know. I think he did a better. I think you're right. I think he did a better job on this than he did on the Force Awakens. No doubt about it. You know it. what I mean? This is this is really really good. Totally. Speaking speaking of that good Spock moments like the scene where Spock basically tells that council to go fuck itself when they're like, ah, you've done well despite your, you know, weakness or whatever is a great moment. Yeah. Yeah. His, it's a great example of, of a, a Spock moment in this movie. Even, even the no names, like even the uncredited people are the very, very, very fringe characters in this are just like a lot of the other guys were mm. a lot of the other Vulcans were really, I don't know. Great. Yeah. Even just, the look of them. Spock's dad was awesome. I really like yeah, Spock's ben dad. Ben Cross is that actor's name. Yeah, he's really, Cross, really great. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I know him from anything else, but I don't, but I mean, you know, they just they kind of I don't know, they populated this movie again with excellent people and and your personnel is really key, man. And and you know, so the saying kind of rings true. It's like if you've done a good job on the casting, then fifty percent of your job is done. You, you know what it, I mean? Yeah. And it's like And like I, I remember when seeing Winona come on as the mom and just being and like well, she's slightly kind of like older makeup on to make her make her look older yeah, it was like yeah, a yeah. love bomb went off i was like fucking winona ryder i, I love know, winona ryder. Dude, but in 2009 i, know. I know, did like, too man i was yeah. like uh so it was just this like moment of like fuck i love winona ryder know, and you know that it's like a, a rush of nostalgia totally man I, I loved her when i had a crush on her when i was younger man she was just you know but who did it you know exactly who didn't and she did a i don't know there's just like that moment where she's there's a couple of moments with her and spock that i just She's just such a like – she perfectly embodies that kind of loving humanity that is just – yeah, it's, it's great. She did a good job of it, And man. he's kind of like, oh, mom, stop pinching my cheeks, mom. You know, yeah, like you right. can kind of see it a little bit. Yeah. But I, I, what's cool – He's trying not to be – Yeah, I think what's really cool to me is that she's only in like – I mean, it, the scenes are so short and it's like she – She's just, like Chris Pine, dude, like five minutes. I know. She just not does even. so good, man. She does so much with that little bit of material, man. It's just – Excellent. Yep. Mm. Despite the fact that her costuming is kind of weird. Yeah, totally. Sure. <laughs> kind of sure. Dress that had like a. It looked like it had a frunk. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> like she could have popped the top open and like pulled some drinks out of there or something. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like a like a you know it was like some a sort space of like fanny a, pack. It was like desert garb, like Middle Eastern desert garb. There you, you know go. What I mean, but like vulcanized in like a cheap way. Vulcanized it was, but like the, the like it had like this weird like cylindrical sort of breastplate thing that like it was you odd. Know, just kind of like came down at an angle and then like sort of went in. You know, like mm-hmm. it just yeah didn't didn't 
I don't know. It was funny. <laughs> well, I think, no, it was, it, it was. And I think, Benny, we can throw that in the pile of like the many millions of Star Trek things that we've seen low these many years, dude, where they were just kind of like, you know, in the prop department or whatever, they were like, what does a like futuristic breastplate look like? I don't know, man. Let's, yeah. let's try this. What if we cut I this mean, thing in half and try yeah. that? Oh, yeah, it sounds like a great idea. You know what I mean? Like, how much just, goofy, weird shit have we seen over the years that you were just like, yeah, that one didn't work yeah. so good? You know, it's more or less <laughs> she's wearing like a, you know, like a, like a, like a dress or a robe and, you know, and a headscarf, but like the way the, the robe or dress mm. is built is, is quite bizarre. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. You can imagine them be like, so what does a Ferengi bartender wear exactly. to work? And you're like, well, there's definitely piping, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a frosted cupcake. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> what does a Ferengi? They had some weird, yeah, they've yeah. made some weird choices over what the years. What does a Ferengi bartender wear to work? <laughs> yeah, there, there have been some questionable costuming choices yeah but funny what ones color are ferengi bar towels you know right exactly or what do you think they use in the future for bar towels uh <laughs> bar towels <laughs> bar towels right. space bar towels space bar towels dude totally um so so moving right along um there's there's an actor that plays um, Nero's second in command, and his name is Clifton. Dude, I was literally just gonna bring him okay, up. Okay, so yeah. Clifton Collins Jr. Like this guy is like a known entity now. I think because he did. We he, love like, him. We, we friend of the show, him. Clifton yeah. Collins Jr. He is. I've been a favorite of mine since Traffic. Okay, like that's when I first sure. really noticed him, man, as uh, Frankie Flowers, and he's been in everything. He was excellent in. Yeah, um, we talked about him a bunch in uh, yeah. Westworld episodes. Westworld. There we go. That's that's where I know him. Well, he was also really like he did um extract that movie I told you about that's kind of like the spiritual successor to the office space, you know, it was done by Mike Judge and he plays like the foreman in the mm. in the warehouse where they all work and he's really fucking funny, dude. He plays this kind of redneck working guy. It's freaking great. He's Love it. brilliant, man. And he's so good in this too, man. We don't get to see him a lot, but um, we do get enough of him, and he also has quite possibly the best death by Kirk in this movie. Oh, yeah. When he goes, Yeah, the I've got your gun. What did you say? Yeah. I've got your gun. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hell pretty... yeah. Right? That was great. There were nine shots, too. Yeah, yeah totally. it was nine shots. Exactly. Um, and and <laughs> if, and segueing off of that, I, I wanted to say that I was very, very happy that they finally dialed in the phasers right, man. I feel like they... Oh, the little flippy ones? Yeah, they kind of... I don't know if they, like, kind of Star Wars them a little bit, but I really liked the phasers. They, they Just the way they looked, the way they operated, man, just seemed, like, kind of spot on. I was like, this, is, this feels right, sure. you know? Like, yeah. Snaps and I had a conversation about that in the midst of the movie, like, Oh really? Like, totally. A little, you know, flip from stun to kill mechanism. Totally. The flip man. is so cool. Flip and then just like awesome. the sound effects and the look of it, like very yeah. cool design. And and more fun than like the the TV remote style of yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> like yeah, garage like, door yeah, opener exactly. phasers, <laughs> or the or the like the the original series ones were kind of like these like look like little sound wave guns, you know, and it was like sure. And then somebody would like fall on the floor, you know, like, I, I don't know. I like the very Leslie Nielsen sci-fi stuff. Yeah. They had like, I, I, I remember in TNG, it was like for a while, they had two types of phasers. They had like the full <laughs> on remote and then they had like the little uh, key fob <laughs> for your car size one as well that you could like sort of like tuck into that uh, one piece <laughs> jumpsuit that they were wearing yeah. in the first couple seasons, dude, you know, <laughs> they're called phaser pointers. <laughs> <laughs> the little ones, the keychain, keychain phaser point. Not, not great design there. No, not very, get him on the space hamburger schlemmer catalog. Not very satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, the you know, space Brookstone or uh, what's the other one? Dude? Yeah, exactly. You oh, like go to the commissary God. on your extra space box and just buy a few of them. You know, space space sharper image, dude. That's a total space yeah. sharper image item, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> now you too can blast aliens. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Anyway, um, yeah, I really, really was enjoying the uh, the phasers, man, and and how they were like so rapid fire too. You know, it was like, they were great. Pew 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 pew, cool. pew 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 pew. You know, it wasn't like. All right, let me wait and reload. You know. <laughs> It just went with the fa- it went with the fast. I love the pa- foley. Thank you. I w- it went with the uh, fast paced action of the the sort of the rest of the movie, the fast paced look, and the sure. and the lens flares, <laughs> and the lens flares. I mean, some of the stuff like it's like so much of it is to keep the pacing, you know. Or Scotty's sure. like, I'm gonna beam you into the cargo hold. There'll be nobody for miles, yeah. and then like, <laughs> it's like they're every- having like a team meeting, every- you know. <laughs> 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 gather the troops it's a safety meeting guys <laughs> oh my god that was so funny dude what are you guys doing know. making lunch <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're like in the cafeteria <laughs> totally man oh no dude it's great that was really excellent man what else I don't know. We've been visiting Bob's. We should probably just keep going with it. Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's a kind of a bits and bobs sort of situation here. Um, let's Kobayashi see. Maru is very oh, swaggertastic, dude. I don't know. You know what, dude? I I hate to reference pitch meeting for the third time in this episode, but when he says, uh, he says something to the effect of, "You're, <laughs> they're, they're, why would somebody be afraid?" Of cheating on a test that's impossible to beat. That's a that's designed to make you you know afraid. You know what I mean? Like it it made so much sense to me. I was like, yeah, why would yeah. why would anybody be afraid <laughs> to you know on a on a on a fake test that you know is fake that you know is impossible to beat? It's like why would you be afraid of that? And I like for the first time. After all of the times I've heard, you know, Kobayashi Maru talked about in the original, you know, in uh, Star Trek Two and blah 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 blah, um, I gave that a little bit of thought and I was like, yeah, why would that be like that? I don't really get it, you know. But yeah. it was it was kind of a cool inclusion in this one, and I, I regardless because it's kind of iconic from like you know Star Trek Two, and I also think it was cool that you know, like Spock designed it. So there was, there was reason to have like, sure. you know, generate a little bit of tension between those two characters early on. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, and, and it, it, Kirk is a total cock the whole time and it's kind of fun to watch. It is kind of watch him. It's fun to watch him chew on that apple dude and be like, are they? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we're fine. No, nah, I think that's we're okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. good. That's, that's the best line. They're powering up their phasers. That's okay. it's so good it is it really is Mm. and he's what is that one stage where he's just like you know turn on the comms captain (laughs) to zoe yeah 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 yeah. that was great there was some there's some there was some really great funny moments in this man that were legitimately funny that like, there's one that makes me laugh every single time and that's when uh, Bruce Wood goes uh is the parking brake on? <laughs> yeah. John yeah. Cho's like uh no. have you turned off the inertial <laughs> dampeners? <laughs> uh, we're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, but the funny thing is like anybody that's like nerded out enough about Star Trek knows like the inertial dampeners kind of are the parking brake in effect. So there you go. Kind of that was the nerdiest thing you've ever said. <laughs> That's impossible. Anyone who knows anything about the Star Trek universe that knows. Anyone that knows about Trek. <laughs> you sound like Anyone a Wikipedia Anyone that knows article. anything about Trek knows that the inertial dampeners uh-huh. are the parking brake. Exactly. Back to the uh, Kobayashi Maru thing. Please. He's basically acting exactly like... Home improvement guy, uh, Tim uh, Tim Taylor, <laughs> Tim the Tool, Tim Man, the tool Taylor. Man Taylor in uh, Galaxy Quest when he's like all hungover. He, he gets is. picked up by the, the, the fucking Thermians, the Thermians, and he's on the bridge and he's like, "All right, fire all red and blue lasers in, yeah. keep them coming." <laughs> 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 oh go, my god, right, that's so yeah. true, man. That is so true. I never even thought about that. That is that is really funny, dude. Uh, he is very much like that, dude. Fire all the red and blue lasers. 
<laughs> so good. Oh my god. Uh <laughs> one of the best Star Trek movies that there is. Yeah, totally. What do you think what do you guys think about the uniforms? That has been like a long standing thing that like is sort of iconic and they've also changed them about eight zillion times, man. And um just curious like what you thought about the the new uniforms. I didn't it didn't bother me. I like the brightness and stuff and right. they've always just looked like Everyone's going to go scuba diving in these weird kind of like <laughs> wetsuits, you know, space wetsuits. It's like, eh, right on. More space wetsuits. Cool. <laughs> so the next action scene. I don't know. I kind, of, I kind of think the original series suits were like the, 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 the least weird out of all the next generation. It's just weird, like asymmetrical, like. Uh, you know, jumpsuit at first, and then like a like a like a jumper and a pair of slacks. Like no, it was like a you know, yeah. like, slacks with a sweater. <laughs> but it, like it's just so badly, dude. Yeah. So badly nineties yeah. that like it's, it it's is just, definitely. You know, um, uh, dude, the TNG the TNG were costumes were like it was kind of like your like weird goth piano teacher's leotard or something that she like practices ballet <laughs> in or something. It's like. <laughs> Black up to their breastbone, right. and then red or inverse or whatever. It's yeah. just oh man, yeah, it's just, they were they were bizarre. Yeah, no, I asked you that question because I I wanted to know, you know, I I, I wanted to hear your take on it. And I, I, it's funny, I feel the same way, man. Like I I always thought that the the original series uniforms were kind of like, yeah, you know, I mean, like I you know we grew up watching TNG right and Deep Space Nine and Voyager, and it's like you know when I would look back at the those original uniforms. You know, I was like, ah, they're kind of like, you know, outdated, whatever, you know. But, but when you look at them kind of freshened up, but it's essentially the same uniform, like, I, I really like it, man. I like it a lot. I like that that clean simplicity of it. I don't know. Like, the 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 weirdness of Star Trek's costuming choices, whether it's the Federation costume or, like, you know, Ferengi shit or whatever we were cracking jokes about earlier. Like, it's, mm. it's such a core piece of the Star Trek charm, you know. Totally, that, like, man blandness but not kind of bland or outdated but not kind of outdated it's just i don't know it's so quintessential to it it is and yeah. cool i mean I it's know. like it's cool that they've always kind of done that you know like i i i was so used to the 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 like from the wrath of khan onward like for the original cast like they were in the movies at that point you know and like those those uniforms yeah. with the with the marsh what did you call it then the marshmallow collar marshmallow collar and like the <laughs> The weird integrated buckle and the like, you know, like they're, they're either like cranberry, you know, they're like maroon <laughs> cranberry or like gray uh, or like you know tan right. cream color. Like yeah, it's, yeah, huh. it's kind of super eighties, <laughs> like whatever. Yeah, dude, you know? yeah, very, very. Yeah. Like I remember, like the security guards at the Crystal Mall used to wear like, you know. Star Trek Colors uniforms. Like like, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I think this is worth mentioning because I've sort of, well, for me it is anyway because I've complained about it before, but like, and Ben kind of like shut me down with a very uh, astute um, comment um, when I brought it up last time. I was complaining about the creatures on Star Trek and how they're all bipedal and whatever. And he was just, <laughs> he was like, bro, we all know that's what everybody's like in the Star Trek world. That's the price of admission, man. Or that's what you get when you pay at the door. And he's right, dude. But I got to say that I really like the creatures in this. They really kind of stretched it a little bit with some of the alien races. And they looked really mm -hmm. good. And I was really, really happy to see just a skosh more effort put into that, you know? Mm. You know, Except for the chick with the googly eyes in the beginning that delivers the baby. Yeah, she was kind of yeah. weird. That was weird. <laughs> Which was the weirdest that was, thing that ever. Like a, that was like a like a fucking iPhone filter or something. Like it just, yeah, exactly, looking. exactly. Yeah, stupid looking. <laughs> but the the green. I agree. Except for that chick. The green chick. It was cool to see a green chick in there, man. It was cool. You know, yeah, so generic. And very that, cool throwback. That girl, that that actress, actually went on to do uh, some pretty big stuff in the sci-fi TV space, dude. Um, I can't I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but um Rachel Nichols. Rachel Nichols, that's it, yeah. Orion's and a lot of the newer track stuff. Like Oh really? Yeah. There's a nice. lot of stuff that a lot more Orion characters and a lot more stories that sort of revolve around them. I like that. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna have to watch some Strange New Worlds tonight, dude. It's such a great throwback to the like, old old school track too. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Agree. I love it. I like that they put a, a few whores de overs in there, man. You know, makes a man feel good. It's Hell it's yeah. interesting because you know uh, <laughs> you got you got Zoe Saldana in this, um, and then you know she plays uh, Gamora, who is essentially might as well be an Orion. <laughs> That's true. <I> mean, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Right. Wow. You could totally that. see how that might be a huge influence for that character. Yeah. The origin. Uh, Gamora and Ohura. Gamora, Ohura. Gom, Gomhura. Damn, Zoe Saldana is the shit. Totally. Gohura. Go- is it like a Goku? Gumhora. Gumhora. Wait, Whoa. Gumhora. <laughs> Gumhora. That sounded dirty. <laughs> I didn't mean to make it sound like I was saying No, he's Hora. trying to do a mashup. Gumhora. Gumhora. Oh, gotcha. Gum-hora. Gumhora. Gumhora. <laughs> the the, the, the and Uhura. Gum. Gumhura. Helmsworth. Gumhora. Crimsworth. The first name shit was really funny. I don't know. This this the yeah. Uhura Kirk shit is just I don't know. It just hit the right spot for me. Yeah. Him just really trying too fucking hard and her just being like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, but and the fact that it like she's hooking up with Spock. I think <laughs> so it was, funny. I feel like it was just enough. You know what I mean? Like he, yeah, he yeah. kind of made an ass it. out of himself, but like he didn't push it too far, and they didn't push it. And too she would far. laugh, you know. She was like, "You're an ass, but you're funny." Like he would have, you know. She, she was charmed a little bit, but also just like, nah, totally. And the first name kind of running gag, yeah, that culminates in in them, you know, making out on the transporter pad or whatever. And Kirk just looks over, he's like, "What the fuck? Oh, yeah. okay." <laughs> it's funny, dude. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah. Uh, yes, the Red Matter ship was very cool. And Nero's ship was also very cool, despite the fact that it was absolutely Nero's ship was super cool. Ridiculously massive. For a very little like, reason. Like it looked like it looked like like Cthulhu uh, coming uh, through that hole, man. I was like, God, <laughs> flying spaghetti monster. Right? It, looks like the, is... it looks like the it like the spaceship embodiment of a tribal tattoo. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> It really is it, man. I, I could not make heads or tails of like what the inside was supposed to be like. I know. It's supposed to be a mining vessel, so you would think, of, you know. It'd be like orange everywhere. A mining shit everywhere. vessel would be a little more practical, but it's just like all these like like random platforms. At totally. Pla- heights, like, That's it. It's with platforms. With no guardrails and just like an open space. And then like, yeah. you know, the area where they had Pike to torture him was like, you know, in like six inches of water or whatever. Totally. <laughs> it was like a grudgy. What the fuck is going yeah, on here? Like, totally. <laughs> I, I didn't get any of that either, man. I thought it was very yeah. odd, you know. And like, give and, us the secret codes. And, no. Yeah. Here's a boogly big beetle. It'll go into your nose. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I thought, I thought like it was fun. Like, ra- like Nero's throne was just sort of seemed like it was in the most random position in the ship, too, you know? Like, yeah. Like everything was just. In a random platform, like that's where everything exists in that ship. Like that's the sense I get when I see all the interiors. You know, like it's like where do they eat lunch on platform three hundred and ninety three? It's up that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, let's go to the room that has or the platform that has all the water on the floor. <laughs> you know, like it was just odd. It doesn't strike me as like a, a, a mining ship. You know, like I would, I would expect the mining ship to be more like. Industrial, like, could, like the interior of it could have they could have just filmed it in like a factory or something. Like they did the rest of everything else, sure. you know. Yeah, I agree. But, um, Instead, it's like a giant like night. It's like a space nightclub where they have raves and shit. No, dude, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you said it understand. perfectly. It is a yeah. physical representation of <laughs> a tribal, tribal <laughs> tattoo, dude. That's so good. <laughs> if a tribal tattoo was a spaceship, that would be it. You it know, would be this. Um, yeah, and I also thought like. And, and this would like sort of fall into the holes category, like like the the whole thing with the drill, you know, it's just like why in the I don't understand why this thing needs <laughs> developed a drill. I don't, we developed a drill to give worms <laughs> to ex Vulcans, you know, like I don't get why, why <laughs> I don't get why it's all ju- the whole reason it exists is just so they can space jump onto it, man. This, like, so for well, know. as 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 he said in pitch meeting, more action, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it's a I love that scene, the space the space skydive. Yeah, dude. It's, it's excellent, dude. But like, I, I just, it's like, why would the ship have like a a drill that goes down? Lit, it has a chain 
and a drill that goes from space all the way down to the planet. Like, it's... Why couldn't, like, why couldn't what, the beam just come directly from the ship? Thank like, you. Why does there have to be a, a thing that unfurls from the ship and then fires? Yeah. And like, you know, does the atmosphere fuck it up that much? It doesn't seem like... I don't know. Anyways. No, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm kind of getting stuck on this a little bit, but like it. You it's guys just, just don't get it. It's just so I've developed it's, a drill. It's kind of dumb, dude. Like I, I, I was I mean, like, where's the spool that holds all the chain for that damn drill, dude? Like it must occupy. Like maybe that's why the ship is so big, dude. Because the spool of the wire just, is yeah, so big. That. You know, I don't know. Sure, man. It's a good reason, if any. I'll buy it. <laughs> for, oh, yeah, for, a shi- for a ship that, a ship that looks like a tribal tattoo anything's possible dude <laughs> right? anything goes totally who knows all right we can move on what else nugs nugs du-dum, du-dum, du-dum. i don't really i don't have any nugs actually this week what do you got chad no no i got one that i read that made me really sad mm, what's up which is jj glued zachary kinto's fingers together so he could give a good salute which i think is lame as shit are you kidding? No. Nope. That is really piss poor. Come on, you got to be able to do the Vulcan salute, Bro, dude. You can't. How hard is Come it on. to do this? If you can't, how do fucking this, hard is that? If you can't, do, <laughs> if you can't do that, man. Come on, man. I think he could, but they just had to. I don't know. So that was a weird one. That is weird. Just, just but, practice for a minute, you know. Just practice for like it? a night, like one night. Yeah. Just, just hold your hand like that for a while, and then go back to normal, and then do it again. What's so, up? And there's like a little, uh, I was looking around the intertubes about, you know, people talking about this movie at the time. And he's on the Daily Show with Stewart back in the day, right. Abrams. And at one point, he's just like, yeah, I didn't really like Star Trek, you know. So like, da, 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 da. And then <laughs> John Stewart's just like, oh, yeah, no, I stopped listening after you said you didn't like Star Trek, and, like, the crowd just fucking whoops. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. and then John Stewart's like, your lips were moving, so I assume you were apologizing, but, uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> and it was just so perfect, you know? It's like Abrams is kind of caught out, and he's, like, sipping from the the coffee cup, trying not to just be, like, mad about Stewart oh, giving him shit. Oh, my God, that that's funny. good, dude. That is so good. Because uh, I feel like this is, it's a, uh, I enjoy it as a film and a, and it's fine as a Star Trek movie, but it's a Star Trek movie made by mostly people that didn't really like Star Trek as mm. evidenced by, he was like, talked, you know, he talked about how he never really liked Star Trek and that, you know, the co-creator of this never seen Star Trek and like Saldana had never watched Star Trek. It's so, like, there's a lot of people in this that actually just had no connection, which sure. like, okay, fine. I don't care. But it, I think it kind of shows some of the non trekkiness to this movie mm-hmm. and, and I just love that he got called out by Stuart. Yeah, that's very funny. That's a good that's a good little bit. Um I still enjoy the movie. Though, I so love it, it, dude. I don't care. I love this movie. I started watching the other one too the other night. So maybe that's like a good place to finish up because like I am not a fan of the other ones. And Why? maybe I seem to revisit everybody... them, but I remember being so hyped on this and I just was like, I don't give a fuck about the other ones. Why does like, everybody I hate I don't understand them. why everybody hates Into Darkness I don't know. so much. It's got like, I just remember not liking it. It's got Cucumber Patch, it's got uh, Robocop, it's got uh, Bruce Wood. It's like what what's not to like, man? I don't know. Klingons. I think if they, they took the creative license to swap the positions of Kirk and, and uh, Spock. You didn't you didn't you didn't like that? Or is that what No no, I think that's like. why people don't like it. I love yeah, that, right. man. I was like, how cool is that? What's wrong what the hell's the matter with that? This is like a alternate universe or whatever. Like, I don't know. Well, don't you know, cool. nerds being nerds, I think they're like, So this is canon now, this is what happens. No, do you know? It's like, no, 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 no. It's just a different it's a different universe. I don't know. I mean that shit starts to get really confusing. No, that's it. I I, I was just curious if you guys were fans of the other ones. That's all. I just was, I just remember not being. What did you think about the other two heeks? Do you like them? Are you indifferent to them or I didn't have any problems with them. I didn't want them to stop making them. <laughs> yeah. Um and there's apparently there's apparently another one in the pipes. Is there? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm totally down with some more of it. Yeah. That's you know apparently the same cast, but you know, uh, not necessarily a direct continuation of the story. Yeah. It's such a great cast, man. It'd be such a shame to not do more with them. Yeah. I mean, I liked. Uh, I, I feel like Into Darkness was decent. Um, 
I get why some people didn't like it, but I thought it was decent. And then um, whatever the hell the other one was with uh, the lady from uh, Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon? I don't even remember that one. I've seen it. But I don't remember. I felt like that one was cool because it, it peered up different, different, uh, you know, like certain groups in that show or, or in that in the movies, I guess, or sort of like buddy buddy, you know, and it kind of swapped those groups up a little bit. So it was like Spock and Bones, you know, were hanging out through most of the movie and, hmm. you know, that kind of a thing. So huh, it, was, it was interesting. Yeah. I need to revisit them. I mean, I really dug this one, so I don't really see any reason why I wouldn't have enjoyed the ride on the other ones. Like, if I'm willing to be like, ah, it was just a silly ride that was fun. <laughs> like, Yeah, it's kind of more of the same. Yeah. You know, I mean, Wrath of Khan is such a fan favorite, and it's such an epic movie. Yeah. To try and redo yeah. that in this with this configuration, and then to, like, make the changes that they made, you know. Of course, that's going to piss off some nerds. So piss people, yeah, risky. But they're like, but it's the Kelvin verse. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change what happened in Wrath of Khan. It's just what happened in this universe. But this is one of the first. This is one of the first offshoot reboots. You know, back in the day, yeah. this is before all of the Marvel shit. You know, so I kind of like. I kind of like that this is MCU ish with without any of the mcu baggage this is like post iron man but pre everything else and as a result like i'm kind of cool with it being a reboot alternate universe reboot because at the time i was like okay yeah that's kind of i can kind of get behind that but now it's like every fucking franchise in the universe is multiverse bullshit you know i know it's a little bit tired now so i'm 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 forgiving of this particular offshoot yeah definitely dude i mean i don't know I feel like it's it's like it's cool to do, but it's like now it's just being done to death. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it's just poor. Literally, I want to die instead well, of watch these. Guys. They're just like, oh, well, this is a way we can make more money and like make it more disgusting and make people hate it more. It's like okay, well, whatever, go for it. So they uh, they dug their grave and made their bed. No doubt. Anyway, so uh, recommendations or do we do deaths? Deaths? Yes, deaths. Deaths. Two deaths. I had the Bruce Wood death, and you had the pan-galactic ball gargling death. <laughs> Fair enough. <coughs> oh, man. So good. So good. So In terms of recommendations, good. like, I don't know. Does this hold up as, as enjoyable as the first time I watched it? No. Is it fucking damn close to holding up? Yes. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like my, my current you know, interest in movies is shit like Civil War, like some interesting weird out there stuff as as like one kind of thing that I'm interested in these days. And the Mm -hmm. other is like having fun, which like Beekeeper and this and just and like the Deadpool Wolverine, which I haven't seen the new Deadpool, but like, you know, as Benny was saying, like, it's good, like, I just, I don't know. I think half of me is like, have some fun, and half of me is like, watch weird shit. And mm. the in between, like the Marvel Cinematic style, I just don't give a fuck anymore. And yeah, uh, yeah. this is worth a revisit just because it's fun. It's a fun, it's really fun. Mm. And I want to watch the other two now. I kind of feel like, I feel like the other two came out when I was still at the like, take everything too fucking seriously phase of my life. Sure. And I probably enjoy, will enjoy them just as much as I enjoyed how silly that, you know, like fun this one is. Sure. So. Good for that's, you. That's my. Uh, that's your recommendation. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Good for you, buddy. Is that your recommendation? That's Chad? me. Mm. Uh, ben Walker. Yes. What's your recommendation, if any? Um, yeah, I mean, if you love Trek, this is just more Trek. You know, and, it's uh, great too. Yeah, I think it, I think it's great. I think um, it's it's well worth a watch. I, I I've probably seen it enough times, but I've I've seen it a bunch Definitely. of times. So um, yeah. If you haven't seen it and you like Trek, mm. it's, I think it's worth a watch because it's just a, yeah. it's a different, you know, it's a different take and it's a different canon that doesn't affect the rest of the Star Trek universe. So just, right. it's, mm. it's just pure fun for what it is, you know, just some yeah. take it at face value and it's got some great actors and, you know, some good quick dialogue and some stupid fun action and mm. yeah. it's not so bad. Yeah, right on. It is stupid fun. Uh, you know what? Benny said it. I'm just I'm gonna go with what Benny said. That's exactly right on. It's good fun. Just go watch it. It's 
great. That's it. Word. Slave 2. What are we doing next week? You pick, man. You haven't had a pick in 17 years. What do you want to do? Hmm. Pick something. Oh, boy. Hmm. Okay, why don't we do just one of the guys, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 80s classic, got William Zabs in it. Totally. Let's do it. All right. Just right. one of the guys it is, then. Let's do that. Sounds fun. So there you have it, folks. Uh, next, uh, uh, let's do that again. Uh, Slave 2, what are we doing next week? You pick. How about my favorite 80s movie? Just one of the guys with William Zabka. <laughs> That seems very well thought out. That's a great idea. I've been thinking about it all day. Nay, all week, <laughs> Chad. Um, awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. We're going to do that great movie that everybody loves, Just One of the Guys, next week. So tune in for that. There you go. <laughs> Seriously, though, thanks for joining us for Trek, everybody. And uh, tune in next week for Just One of the Guys. We're going to go now. Bye. Toodles. And that's going to wrap up this week's episode. Folks, if you'd like to check out the show notes for the episode, you can do so in your podcast app O choice or our website, ebd.fm forward slash episodes forward slash 267. And uh, as always, we really appreciate everybody that has supported us low these many years. And if you would like to support us going forward, you can do so on Patreon. You can also... Uh, tell people to check out the show, and you can also rate us and review us, which is incredibly helpful. So please do that. And thank you to everybody that has done it this far. Um, if you'd like to join us on social media, Instagram is where we lurk around, at EBD Podcast. Join us there. Thanks so much for joining us for Star Trek. We'll see you next week for just one of the guys. So on for now, folks. Beedy, beedy, beedy. Stop into it.